is the whole narrative taking on a very emotional tone because of the you know the the prominence of the female voice and, and what about this thing, this idea within the black community that the system the dominant system as always are has as a strategy as a tactic use black women as a means of communicating with the black community but at, but at, with an intentional cost when they have been vocal because you know they they've been dealt with as aggressive and so forth and you know the way they are managed is, an, is a lot different from how men are so as women we have to acknowledge that understand that rec- rec- recognize that yes i know i've heard some detractors about george soros and whether or not they've got um uh, some of our white counterparts who are uh, financing quietly in the background. Greetings and the warmest of welcomes to this week's ORT. Everyone is here. Okay. Greetings, Brother S. How you doing? I'm very well, Sister Ebony. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Keep on Beautiful. keeping on I'm good, yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad to hear it. Oh, I was just about to say, we are with Fia um, Kindred, and there she is, right on cue. Boom. Bang. <laughs> Kindred. <gasps> the crowd roar. <laughs> <laughs> Kindred, what what are you saying? Yes, man. Glad to be Yes, man. Yes, the kitchen. Haven't <laughs> heard Brother S's voice for a little while. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here, sister. Good to know. Good to I'm know. Gla- glad to hear you. Greetings, Kindred. How are you doing? Greetings, Ebony. Nice to hear your voice, too. Yeah, you too. We have to discuss a topic. Do you have any ideas, Kindred or Brother S? Well, there's so much floating around, but there's two things that are um, that are kind of, that have been around sort of over the last week or so. And one just today. The first one is just some a lot of chatter I've been picking up on social media about the um, the the BLM protests all over the place, and there's seems to be a debate going on about whether or not the voice of protest is too female. Have okay. women kind of dominated mm-hmm. a lot of the chatter around the whole Black Lives Matter agenda? Mm-hmm. And should women be um, at the forefront of the protest as they seem to be in some places? And just sort of, there's a lot of discussion around that that is quite interesting. So that was maybe one thing. The mm. other thing was a news story I just heard today that the government has cleared the way for three million people from Hong Kong to to relocate to this country if they see fit. So they're willing to grant visas to up to three million people from Hong Kong. While at the same time, there's a news story running alongside that, that the victims of Windrush are now having to prove, quote unquote, beyond reasonable doubt Mm. about their lost earnings. Mm. Wow. I just thought those two things running alongside each other were quite interesting on the same day. Yeah. Mm. Very, two, two very juicy ones there. Mm. Mm. When you come, you come with your hand fully. <laughs> 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 so I'm open to anything else that anybody wants to put on the table, but that's just no, two no, things that these are great. caught my attention. These are great ones. Mm. But I guess. I like them. I like I, either of them. I don't know if you want to do uh, to split them and speak about both, so you could have some comments on both. And I would, I, would, I think. Oh gosh, um, I, well, I'm what old, would you I'm prefer? Old. What would I prefer? Hmm. Um, I was immediately drawn to the first one. Yes. Um, but at the same time, a bit reticent because. Um, there is, well, this would be part of the debate, wouldn't it? If I'm going into part of the debate, so we, I would yes. choose that we yes. don't choose it. And the next one, um, I feel like I need some more figures or something around it just to under, yeah. but it's it's a very juicy one. I hear you, okay. yeah. We can defer it. 
We can, I think, yeah, because okay. it's, it's the headline today, but I think more will come out and we need to be maybe... Yeah, I want, I, I, I want to have a more of a, of a kind of forensic look at certain things. Yeah. Right? Okay. okay. All right. Ebony, you good with that? Right. Well, I'm going to press on. As usual, I have a warm-up quiz. And oh, no. Yes, no. We welcome everyone to this week's ORT. We're going to be discussing the Black Lives Matter protest and its gender orientation, or what, however how it seems on the surface, it's gender orientation. But before that, we're going to do our quiz. And I know that I'm with some of the sharpest minds when it comes on to matters relating to melanated people. Time. So um, seven questions, quite straightforward. I think, you know, these will be a walk in the park for you. So which of the follow question one, which of the following men made a timely and emotional call for black fighting spirit at the recent protest marches in London following the death of the murder of um, George Floyd? Was it Ian Wright, Chuka Amuna, or John Boyega? John Boyega. John Boyega. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> The two, the both of you are right. John Boyega. John was John was seen am, among the crowd and could be heard on the megaphone telling black men to rise up. Uh, question two. Antonio Fargas, commonly known for playing Hoggy Bear in Starsky and Hutch, was also in the film I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. True or false? True. Kindred? Yeah, I think it might be true. Are you both going true? Okay. It's true. He played the pimp of the year. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> he had he had he had the fish in his heels. Yes. Yeah, he was sending up himself. I remember it now, yeah. <laughs> and the very dubious song which won him Pimp of the Year, which I won't repeat. Yes. Like, right. like disparaging, but yes, he is a, he's a yeah. very much um, memorable figure in that film. Question three. Rice and beans, as known by the white community, is correctly called what by the black community? Rice and peas. <laughs> <laughs> Bang on. Bang on. And, and now uh, more and more people cook it with basmati rice, but I still prefer the long green rice if I had to eat rice. Oh, dear. So, uh, question four. Which is the oldest independent country in Africa? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Did you... You're going to kick yourself? No. Uh, independent. Ghana. Ooh. No. What is it, though? No. I thought it was Ethiopia. Bang on, it is Ethiopia. Oh, <laughs> mate, mate, mate. <laughs> well done. And just to show you how long, um, Black people have all seen the same to white people. Nubia, at one point, was called part of Ethiopia when it was Kush, and mm. it was by the ancient Greeks, and it was the seat of the earliest civilization in Africa, with a history yeah. that can be traced at least two thousand years before Christ. Question, Beautiful, yeah. yeah, isn't it? Question five. Uh, Montserrat is a Windward Island, true or false? Ooh. True. Mm -hmm. Isn't it Leeward? It is actually Leeward, uh, but you were asking, you wasn't saying, so you don't get that point. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, good, good, good. You're right. You're harsh, Chris, you're harsh. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> yes, it is a Leeward Island. Uh, and this is one I'm sure both of you will get. It's quite easy. Uh, which London borough has the largest black population? Mm. Oh, that's, a, that's probably changed. Tottenham. Um, no. Haringey. No. I would go somewhere like, is it Brent? Kenza and Chelsea. <laughs> How many goals are you going to have? <laughs> <laughs> Brent, like <laughs> me? <laughs> Windsor and Maidenhead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Southwark with 47,000.
four hundred. Oh, wow. That seems obvious now you said it, you know. Yeah. yeah. I said I said you you you'd know it. Because it's yeah. either gonna be Lambeth or Southern working yeah. on yeah. glass. Kindred, this point around mm -hmm. the integrity, I think, is the underlying point we're trying to look at here of Black Lives Matter. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily think of it as the integrity. I think it's, there's a lot of things going on with it at the moment, but one of the things that I'm homing in on is a lot of the, the voices that we're hearing across the media, a lot of these very um, impassioned, you know, pleas for justice and, and you know, the expressions of anger are coming from women and oh. they are very, very emotional. When I was growing up, there was something called apartheid. I witnessed blacks and whites not being able to be together in South Africa. Jamaica, under the leadership of Norman Manley, was the first country in the Western Hemisphere to declare, even before we were independent from Britain, that we would not trade with a country that had those kinds of restrictions on black people. It is because it's in our DNA. It is because it's who we are. It is because 100 years before full freedom, there was a woman who walked from Portland in the East to tell her brother in St. Elizabeth not to trust the British. That woman was Nanny. for a little while now partly because of being pinned as the angry black woman but you know what I am angry in fact I'm really angry I'm angry that I can't go on social media without seeing pictures or videos of people that look like me my dad and my brother being murdered for just existing I'm very very annoyed as a result of the indiscriminate killing of black people in the United States of America by agents of the state it is instead a display of emotional and mental rage because we would no longer watch how our brothers and sisters are subjected to all manners of ill treatment by law enforcement officers in the United States of America. The death is not funny. It is not funny. The death of George Floyd is an act of barbarism that is being spearheaded by the white supremacists. Again, I keep saying there's nothing like white. He's either pink or redneck in the United States of America because black lives, brown colored people, their lives, our lives matter. But we say black lives indeed must matter. The Center for African Liberation and Socioeconomic Rights have in numerous forums stated that it is indeed time for the blacks, I want to continue to use the blacks because that's what we're used to, and Africans to take their destinies into their hands. And, you know, the protests that we've seen um, going on all over the place, there's a lot of women there on, on, you know, on the streets, you know, alongside the, the men and the boys in the protests. And it, I think I'm wondering what is the whole narrative becoming? Excuse me, Microsoft. Is the whole narrative taking on a very emotional tone because of the, you know, the, the prominence of the female voice? Mm. Or, and if it is, is that a problem? Um, mm. And what is the role of women in, in this whole protest, given that, you know, we care about our men, we, you know, we feel the injustice, there have been women victims too, so we have a role, but it, is our voice too loud and is it possibly overpowering the male voice? I don't know. Mm. So as a, as a woman, what would you say? 
What do you feel when you I see? Do. My immediate response to it is, I do think there is a lot of emotion and that is absolutely understandable because it is emotive and you can't see the kind of images that we've seen without becoming emotional about it and knowing what we know about the But is it too feminine driven is what which is what your question but is is it too feminine? I think the the way it's being communicated we can feel the emotion but the way it's being communicated I think is very female I'm feeling these very loud very emotional women yeah and I'm not necessarily sure that that is the the most effective use of our female energy within the context of these these protests. I'm not sure that's necessarily the best way for us to support and show solidarity to our men. Okay. Yeah, brother, as you wanted to say something. Well, I'm just thinking here that uh, you know I don't think that uh, the movement that was started by three sisters. Uh, it's my understanding, right? I don't know that they should have to apologize for um, organizing and, and uh, setting up a movement which appears on the surface to have been quite successful, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know I've heard some detractors about George Soros and whether or not they've got um, uh, some of our white counterparts who are uh, financing quietly in the background the movement in which case that has some people uh dissenting about it but i no, don't know the dissenters no um not necessarily i think in the in the bigger picture the what the movement stands for in principle i completely agree with Okay. Yes. Whether or not there may be individuals within the movement that some people have an issue with, I can I can see with that also. But I don't know that anybody is bigger than the team, unless, of course, as the detractors are saying, that, you know, there's an agenda hidden or otherwise that's being run by a counterpart and that we actually may still be um, bringing our, our begging cups to the table. Uh, I guess what they're implying is, are we really... Um, empowered or are we being steered in a way where somebody else has a another agenda mm. right so there's that issue now as i said i don't think that the, the women the sisters should apologize for that if there are and i'm quite sure around the world there are men speaking there are brothers speaking right mm. um and as to the power of their voices the issue here is and quite understandably we have a we have a history that's not that far or long for us to remember that when we had our brothers who used to come up and talk most of them were killed yeah yes yeah so if it means then that at the helm we have the sisters there and the message can get across which is inclusive of the men remember they're asking for justice for men and women for our brothers and our sisters they're not just saying not women for women there's you know they're mm. they're essentially asking for justice for our brothers and our sisters so i have to embrace that as a philosophy uh and uh i guess we just need to be able to encourage the male voice to be heard uh, as powerfully as the female voice, not instead of or in place of, but as well as. And, and what about this, thing, this idea within the black community that the system, the dominant system as always, are, has as a strategy, as a tactic, use black women as a means of communicating with the black community? with an intentional cost. This is O.R.T. With the black community, with an intentional cost of subjugating the black man into a secondary position. Well, like I said, who, who's the question to? Well, no, I'm just saying, is it, you know, that has been part of our thinking for many years, that the system has yeah. chosen black women to interfere with because it's less of a threat. So if you have a movement now that's been spearheaded by black women, does that also play into that thought, that anxiety that once again, black women are being given a role? 
and I use the word given to express that, you know, some of these expressions, they need a partner on the other side to be favorable to them. So if black women have been given the role as much as, they've, as, much as this, they have fought for it, does that feed into that pre previous held notion that black men are being intentionally put in a secondary position? Mm -hmm. And again, who are you asking? No, that's just that's just a kind of rhetorical plus a, a question I'm right. putting out there. You know. Okay. Because as you were speaking, you you know you, you're definitely right in much of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. However. I know from my years of studying white supremacy, there is a sometimes latency in me to kind of pick up on something or us as, an, on a, as a group to pick mm -hmm. up on things and understand the ramifications of certain behaviors much later on, years later. Mm -hmm. So here we are now in the midst of trying to get something from this movement that we've been wanting for for a long time. And we have to be open to any pitfalls that may be present to us in real time if we're, if we're going to make the most use of the energy that is around now. So it's just from that standpoint that I wouldn't want it to be that in a few years' time we could say, yes, we know we wasn't going to get what we want because, again, they were playing the CMO trick, which is put the women up front, give the women the platform, and the men have to, you know, the men with their ego and their fighting spirit has to take a, a back seat. Mm. Okay, so greetings everyone. Late to this conversation. Greetings. Welcome, uh, man. Welcome. Welcome. We just call out the club. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've missed much of the conversation, but just picking up on what yourself and Brother S has been saying um, and really just kind of questioning, I'm not sure who it is that has put the women up front. front. Um, and regardless of that, I think we have to recognize as a community, men, women, um, youngsters, our teenagers, our young, young, younger, our younger uh, members of our community, we have to recognize that this is a force for us all. Um, and if we're hearing voices of women, that is fabulous, as well as hearing voices of the men and the younger yeah. people and the elders. This is a community effort. This is something that needs to come from us all. I'm not sure, I haven't seen anything, or I don't think I'm in a position to sort of like look at data, or I've not seen any material that suggests to me that women are this and uh, are more vocal than men or anybody else in the community. So I really can't speak to that. Mm. But I think um, taking on board what you have said, Kush, in terms of there has been instances where women, for, for instance, you know, um, in not so distant decades, we have been promoted ahead of our uh, black men who have been demoted, so to speak, in the kind of employment sector. And we've been encouraged to forge ahead. And there have been some women who have taken that um, and not really seen it for what it is and kind of providing themselves from our black men and so forth. That has happened. I don't, you know, I don't dispute that. But we have to recognize, don't forget that and um, keep that in our thoughts and, you know, be really clear and understand that this is something that affects us all, man, women, child, elders, and something that we must all have a voice for. We must all be prepared to put with our, with our voices, our actions, and so forth. Um, I can't really speak to women taking the, 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 the lead. And if it indeed it, it is happen, happening, I think as women, we have to recognize that it's happening and perhaps support our brothers, and encourage our brothers, understand um, the difficulties and the challenges that men have faced when they have been vocal because you know they they've been dealt with as aggressive and so forth and you know the way they are managed is, in a, is a lot different from how men are so as women we have to acknowledge that understand that rec rec recognize that but and also formula our plan to support men in them putting forward their voices and taking leadership role and being leaders because they are leaders um, but this is a community thing and we all have a responsible responsibility to one member of the pitfall who recognize this is something for all and we should all be having a voice and all be supporting each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Any any um response to that as it was your question, Kindred? Yeah, 
Nicely said. I mean, I, I think I agree with everything that's been said so far because you can come at this from so many different angles. Mm. Um, Excuse me, Microsoft. <laughs> you think that there is, it's the danger of their, it, it tipping over. And I'm not necessarily saying this has happened conclusively, but it's just a concern that I have that if the female voice becomes the dominant one, yeah. It almost it becomes counterproductive, and as Chris points out, it feeds into something that is ultimately going to take us down the wrong path. And I think that what I really, I I really want to hear our men. I want the lion to roar, and I want you know I want us to. I don't want the you know the female voice to be drowned out, but I do want the men to really seize the moment mm. as well, mm. and and to be heard because. A lot of the time it is the microphone is passed to women okay and for all the reasons that have just been um expressed and there's some very very articulate men around who have a very real um understanding you got, you got two on this show yeah two on this show to share <laughs> and and a real and and positive and helpful suggestion for ways forward solutions and i don't want a lot of that to be drowned out in the emotion of it all because you can get locked into that emotion um, and, and, and 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 in terms of you've mentioned emotion a number of times and it's it's really important that we remember that quite often the way that the whole marketing and pr which black lives matter will become part of now it's on sports sky sports it's on loads of yeah. different things it is about emotion over rationale yeah. So that's a very important point that you you've made. I want, I want I want I want to also raise that. Um, so this this draws into question then accountability. Well, can I just speak to that actually? And I agree, accountability. And I'm sorry I'm interrupting you there, but I just wanted to pick up on what Kindred was saying. And I don't dispute what you're saying, but I my question is: Is it then not more of a responsibility of us as sisters? to call on the voices of the black men who perhaps are reticent for whatever Absolutely. reason or feel not able, isn't it? Are then responsible call them, call on them, their yeah. expertise, their wisdom, their leadership, you know, um, and not sort of stand to the side and see what's happening and critique it or, you know, kind of be reticent ourselves to call on them. Do we not have to then take a stand? That's a very good point, yeah. We, we, maybe we need to be enablers more. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and and not join the society that's disabled our black men. Yeah, that's that's such a good point. Yeah. So yeah, Sorry, um, a, a, accountability was one of the things that came to mind when you were speaking, um, Kindred, because this has to filter down. The changes have to filter down to the average man and woman and child. Mm -hmm. So somehow the experience of the average man and woman and child needs to feed up. It does, and it's it's about what we're modelling to to the to the younger generation as well. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm I just want us to be mindful that they they will take their cues from us. That there's a there's a real energy about our younger generation at the moment that I'm really you know oh, is, is. Very impressed, impressed by. But they are mm -hmm. at the same time looking at us, and we we need to be very conscious of what we're modelling to them. And I think what um, what Denise said just now is really really important. Okay. In that, that okay. We need okay. to be seen to be um, encouraging and opening up that you know that ability of our brothers to really. We've got good communicators, two of them right here, and mm. we need to be encouraging that communication because when when you to speak i listen and I'm, yeah. other people will listen too they are yeah. out there and but it, thank you it, for yeah, that it, it's, they it's are out there trust like me you, that we really need to be encouraging to the forefront Absolutely. thank you um uh -huh. did you want to make a comment brother s well yeah Take just directly pick, slightly. Pick, picking up on what the sisters were saying the the dialogue um that is had between the brothers and sisters i think is important that um, there's value placed on uh, what each gender has to say. Yeah. 
without it becomes so, then we lose a sense of direction and that's what will block okay. us from being able to take the movement forward. Yeah, yeah. So I'm mindful that that, yeah. that has also been a strategy in the past. Yeah. Um, if you look at historically at things like uh, the Black Power movement, the strength of the men and the strength of the women Together. that were both very that were both very vocal yeah. Yeah. and very yeah. and very visible. True. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it the, the, it was easy or not easy, but it was a it was a method of mm -hmm. of divide and rule that was put in there by yeah. J. Edgar Hoover and these people then yeah. to, you know, um, ensure that the movement would fall apart. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be mindful that what we don't now do is to respond in a way where we're hearing some of these dissenters, where we're saying, yeah, actually, yeah, we, it's the women, here they go again, and they've got their, yeah. you know, yeah. they're pushing us to one side. But we need to be mindful that we don't get caught up in that type of negative dialogue, which Absolutely. stops us, hinders us from moving forward together mm -hmm. as kindred tell as a community. Thank you. So we haven't, I want to change the direction. We haven't got that long left. What is it we want to hear from the leadership, no matter whether it's male or female? Who's speaking? What is it? What are the kind of bullet points that we want to hear? from them when they're speaking? I would like to hear what their vision is. Because, yes, we're angry. Yes, we're all, you know, we're hurt. Yeah, but, but beyond, beyond that, what do you want to hear in their vision? What is it? You, everybody must have, you know, something. What I want to I hear, want what, to hear what, yeah, what does success look like? So where, where do you see us in five years' time? What are your proposals as to how we get there? No, and no, no, no. What is what you, you, what you want to see? What I want to like, see personally. Yeah, personal, well, like me, for instance, I want to hear, hear the, the, the discussion of reparations on the table. I want to see it. reparations. This is what I mean. Because we need to get mm. beyond them being black male or female. We want to hear what it is they are going to ask for. Okay. I, I want to see healing and programs on our agenda because if we get reparations tomorrow what we do with it you know it, it's all important if we're not that's in like, a that, place. yeah that's slightly different you know but it's, it's more whether we get it or not it's more okay because the thing about it is we had this problem before obama came in where we wanted yeah. leadership and we wanted somebody's black no i'm saying we need to say behind this the superficial aspects of the person what is it we want? Because then they can't sell us anything if we don't know. Mm. That's it, yeah. So that's what I meant when I said what's our vision, because what yeah, is it that I'm we saying we vision? need to have the vision. We need to be telling them. So for instance, is it that you want a new curriculum of education? Or what, you see what I mean? What are these things that you want to see? Because you've been feeling it for so many years as a black woman. I, what, I what want our you? own educational establishment whether that be expanding Saturday schools okay. or whether that's creating standalone institutions okay. that are completely, you know, separate. I want our own educational system because it starts there. Yeah. That sounds concrete, yes. And I'd like to see the same thing. Ebony or Brother S? Well, I'd like to see some reinvestment back in our communities, particularly focus on our young people. Um, things like our youth clubs are gone. Um, but something really structured. We need our youth clubs with a structure in there to, to speak to the talents of our young people artistically, but to provide that platform, to provide that, um, that community base, to provide back things like our um, youth clubs. And that will speak mm -hmm. to some of our education as well, because then we can provide um, the type of education outside of school. I'd want the, the mainstream education system to be restructured absolutely but outside of that we need to be non-dependent on just that and if we have our community forums if we have our youth club and so forth we can structure our own education mm -hmm. as well and invest in our young people's talents and be again leaders on another level for them as elders um, of those of those of us that have you know the community the experience from our development and so forth but i think we need our youth clubs we need our community centers we need that investment back in our communities as well um yeah. that's just one of many but i think that's something that's really medium that um, yeah 
Yeah. Can I quickly add something to that? Sure. Of course. Once, we, if, once these are up and running, that we twin them with institutions in the Caribbean and on the continent of Africa so our young okay. people can okay. link up and network globally. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We haven't got that long. I've got a few minutes. I know. But uh, um, Kindred kind of snatched some of that in terms of the international and global thinking okay that i was thinking <laughs> you know from from not just from the educational standpoint from what but what we do with our qualifications in in being able to utilize those on a global level mm. Mm. okay and do we want it to be an all-black affair I, I know you were saying that um the other day brother is that we should be leading we should be basically coming with the whole framework of doing this um so i'm giving mainly Excuse me, Ebony Harmony and words brother and uh kindred the last few words on that whether they think it should be an all-black affair Sorry, what was that an all-black affair in terms of just from top to tail managing this this negotiation managing the the way it works the aim of it the focus the ambitions of the media yes. that comes out of it. Yes. 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 Absolutely, yes. Yeah, don't feel no way. Yes. Absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm yes. in agreement with that. For me, that's not negotiable. I'm in yeah. agreement with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Hey, Bunny, did you did you respond? Oh, you're not hearing a dissent from me. Okay, no, we didn't, we didn't hear a yay. And in this time, you know, silence is volumes. Silence speaks volumes. So yes, uh, thank you all for your time. Another very interesting talk about the situation. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks time for another one of these. Thank you to Ebony Harmony, Kindred Spirit and Brother S. And from me, Koshi, your host. What good. Peace. Bless. Peace. Yes. Included below are related links to this discussion. Please share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, talk the thing.